Hey everybody, this is Final Flame Productions. Today I will look back at the saga, the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations of Terminator Dark Fate, the inception of the idea, the lead up to the movie being released, the release of it, uh, the flop, the backlash from fans, all that stuff. Uh, this is my Terminator Dark Fate retrospective. So my first uh, knowledge of Terminator Dark Fate being a thing was an uh, interview Cameron and Miller did, interview with Ho The Hollywood Reporter, a 45 minute long video where the, both of them uh, kind of broke the news about Terminator Dark Fate. I don't think it was called Terminator Dark Fate at that point, but the two of them talked about the fact that it would be a Terminator 2 continuation. So. It would be ignoring all the other films. James Cameron, in this interview, called the other sequels, uh, such as Genesis, Salvation, uh, Rise of Machines, he called them all bad dreams. Uh, he says this would be a revamp for the 21st century. Miller says it would go back to the core values. Tim Miller says the other movies didn't continue the stories of the characters I loved. They said Arnold and Linda would be coming back. And they said they were mapping out three movies. They were going to have a trilogy that Dark Fate was going to kick off. So my initial reaction to this interview is like a 45 minute interview. It was pretty interesting. I, I didn't know that whole much about Tim Miller. I mean I'd seen Deadpool. I was kind of um, on the fence with Deadpool. I did have my questions at this point of what Tim Miller would bring to Terminator. Why was he a good idea? Why was he a good choice for this movie? You know, this was a franchise that needed somebody reliable, somebody that you knew, like a, a Christopher Nolan, like a Matt Reeves, somebody who's made terrific movies, and you know that they're going to bring at least a, a certain amount of quality to, quality to it. Um, and Tim Miller wasn't that at this point. But I did hope that I would be proven wrong. In this interview, uh, Cameron and Miller, they brought up the whole gender politics thing. They made fun of Liam Neeson. They made fun of older male uh, action stars and saying that there's not enough female action star, which was, I guess, a fair point. Um, but again, it was the start of the kind of... Uh, what would be to come later in the marketing and the promotion of this movie where they would start kind of drawing the drawing a line between uh, Sarah Connor being a prominent role in this movie which fans didn't have a problem with but that would be at the expense for other characters such as John Connor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kyle Reese, all these characters would be disposed of, deleted or given minor in, insignificant roles in the movie. There was a, also in this interview there was a lot of discussion about AI and the ramifications in the real world of what that would be and this sort of I think it was done mainly to make to make people perceive this sequel to perceive Terminator 6 Dark Fate as a movie that's going to really it's going to really uh, dig into that subject of AI, which none of the other movies really spent that much time, especially AI in the the uh, modern day, where AI is becoming more and more prevalent, and that seemed like an interesting thing that if they were really going to give time to, but as you've seen in the movie, that didn't really get any time at all, no more than it was given in the other movies. The first image of the movie was then released, the image with... Uh, Danny, Grace, and Sarah, which um, got a lot of backlash, um, and then th th this was used later uh, when Tim Miller attacked the fans based on some of the backlash. The backlash was based on, oh, they're trying to push the female empowerment thing. Uh, personally, for myself, I didn't think the image was uh, that bad. It 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 looked. It looked a bit dopey, um, not as dopey as the Terminator Genesis promotional shots. It wasn't as bad as the Genesis promotional shots, which are truly terrible. But this promotional shot didn't do the movie a whole lot of favors, especially because it didn't include Arnold, which, you know, not including Arnold in a promotional shot is 
a mistake in my opinion, but again, it wasn't that big of a thing. There was a select set of the audience or online community that attacked it and did make uh, really ignorant remarks towards the female actors. But that's part for course or any movie release. There's always going to be edits that uh, comment on it, sort of like Ghostbusters, Star Wars. The question is, do you uh, hone in on that and you make that a big deal? Tim Miller did make it a big deal, but we'll talk about that in a, a little bit later. Next to come later in this, this the, the production cycle was the release of the first trailer, uh, which I was pretty excited to see, but it be, it was a really bland kind of dull trailer that really showed quite a lot but nothing at the same time you had over the top action lots of karate flipping over action shots that really didn't fit into the Terminator franchise you had barely no Arnold I think it's like two seconds of Arnold in the trailer which was bad but then again when you see the movie that was pretty uh, a pretty good representation representation of what the movie would be so the trailer did not get a good reaction and I did say uh, in one of my earlier videos before the movie was, was released that they had to get this trailer right they had to get the right buzz out there that they, they didn't they didn't need to that they couldn't afford to um, turn off more audience members and make people think this is going to be another crap sequel and the trailer did nothing to uh, change people's mind it probably made them made them feel even more uh uninterested and unmotivated to see another terminator movie which is the exact opposite of what this franchise needed at this point because a franchise after genesis and after disappointment of salvation needed a very strong first reaction a very strong first piece of footage from the movie and uh, this first trailer did not do that Soon after that, the leaks of the movie came out, and this is where the fans started to really. This is the diehard fans. Most of the public didn't know about this stuff till later, but the, but the core diehard fans, when they heard about the leaks about John Connor being killed in the first scene of the movie, about Arnie dying, about Arnie not having a, a, a big role at all, all this stuff were big red flags straight away that this movie was going to be even worse than we could ever imagined especially after Genesis being such a turnoff for a lot of fans for a movie like Dark Fate to cause even more upset and to uh, put off even more fans was really a uh, staggering that they could possibly get the movie this movie even more wrong than something like Genesis and Genesis got so much wrong Tim Miller then uh, proceeded to attack fans and it really adding more fuel to the fire and 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 just making a bad situation situation even worse because you lump in the leaks you lump in the bad trailer then you have Tim Miller who was interviewed uh, and <laughs> Tim Miller said if you're an all enlightened She'll play like gangbusters. This is he, this is Tim Miller talking about the character of Grace. He then continues to say, "If you're a closet misogynist, she'll scare the f out of you because she's tough and strong, but very feminine. We did not trade sender certain gender traits for others. She's just very strong, and that frightens some dudes. You can see on the on, you can see the online responses from some of the early shit that's out there, trolls on the internet." Of trolls on the internet I don't give a F so this was a I don't know what you would say it's just a really dopey thing to come out with um, sort of attacking fans sort of attacking anybody that didn't like the movie and suggesting that they're most of the men that uh, are interested in this movie are all misogynists and that if they don't like the character they're misogynists when in fact people Barely anybody uh, in the, the the scheme of things had any problem with Grace. Even after the movie re was released, people that hated the movie had no real issue with the character of Grace. Th that's simple, that's fact, because I thought the movie was complete trash, but I thought the character of Grace was actually a 
good part of it. She was of course underwritten and poorly uh, poorly established as a new character, but that's not down to Mackenzie Davis. Well, that's that, that's down to the, the director and uh, the script writers. Um, but again, yes, they they attacked the fans at this point, and this was a this was a big red flag for people who were following the the, the diehard fans following the uh, release of the movie. This was a this pissed off people, and you lump in with all the people pissed off about the the leaks of the movie. It was just getting worse and worse. The more the movie, um, the more the movie was getting promoted. It wasn't being promoted in a good way at all. The second trailer was released. It was a lot better. Um, showed a lot more. Gave us a little insight more into what the plot was going to be about. Um, CGI was still a little bit stodgy in places. Um, more Arnold, which is good. But at this point, it did feel like. The movie was fighting a, a lost battle because with all the Tim Miller stuff, with the leaks, uh, you lump in then James Cameron said that uh, Edward Furlong would return and there was pretty good information that suggests that he wouldn't, re wouldn't be returning and that just put people off even more because James Cameron, is, it seemed like James Cameron was being disingenuous to the general paying public because the real fans pretty much knew that this was nonsense that if he was going to Edward Furlong was going to come back it would be essentially a CGI uh, kind of deep fake or uh, overlay on a stunt a kid character is what it turned out to be but he made it seem like uh, in an interview that he said, I think it was, it was at, I'm not sure if it was Comic Con or one of those events, he said that Edward Furlong would be back, which all the news articles ran with it and people got excited. But the, if you were a little, if you a little bit more in the know and you were following the release and the promotion of the movie, you knew that this was probably going to be nonsense and that he was being truthful in a slight sense, but being very disingenuous because Edward Furlong's face may have been in the movie but he wasn't in the movie himself so the movie was then released uh, it was before the few days week or so before people were saying that it was tracking very poorly uh, it had been tracking all right the first few weeks before that but um, for whatever reason whatever you would like to pinpoint it on the tracking went way way down the movie released in America with a 20 my 29 million uh, opening and overall, sitting here today, it's it's released. It's it's made two hundred sixty one million overall. That's a big big flop. Compare that to Terminator Genesis, which was supposedly the the black sheep of the Terminator franchise. It made four hundred forty million. Not quite, but almost. Uh, Genesis made nearly double. Not quite, but not far off. Made double worldwide. What Dark Fate did. This was uh, not received well by the general going public. Fans went to see it once, and see, for myself, in a way, it seemed like people did not want to go near it again. And when when you're when the core fans don't want to rewatch it, you're in a big, big, uh, you're in big, big trouble. And the word of mouth was not good. The, the reviews were pretty good, were a lot better than Genesis, but that did not translate to the audience's reactions. And the John Connor backlash was massive. James Cameron said, um, when he was asked after the movie, he said, we invested so much across the first two films and to some degree in other sub subsequent ones that I wasn't involved with in this whole John Connor mythology. It's like, let's just get that right off the table. Let's just pull the carpet from underneath all the assumptions of what a Terminator movie is going to be about. Let's just put the bullet in his head at a pizzeria in the first fight at 45 seconds. Um, <laughs> this is a quote from James Cameron. This is the guy who made the first two movies. This is the guy that created John Connor. And he was essentially the main guy who wanted who killed John Connor. This did not go down well with people. Uh, Tim Miller then came out and said that... Uh, 
he didn't see any reason to have John Connor in the movie. He suggested that there was no way to bring him back in a meaningful way and that he would be just in the way of the female characters uh, or the new characters, sorry. Um, and this was just staggering stuff. This is just annoyed fans profusely and they tried to uh, suggest that that wasn't a big thing. They suggested that the reason the movie did badly is because it was because of the bad sequels before which may have been true up to an extent um, but people's reactions to the John Connor thing were very strong and a big reason to why the movie did not do well and did not get repeat viewings or good word of mouth. Kyle Reese was also uh, <laughs> thrown under the bus uh, uh, Tim Miller said that Kyle Reese doesn't exist anymore because of what they did with Dark Fate. He suggested that Kyle Reese was not important and did not exist anymore. This is another slap in the face of another huge male uh, character in the Terminator franchise. You have John Connor gone, you have Kyle Reese gone. Um, all this stuff lumped in with the the the, uh, the, le the leaks of the movie that pissed off people. The leaks all became true, and were, were, some of it was even worse in the movie. The scene in the movie where uh, t they sort of make fun of J John Connor and suggesting that you're not uh, the leader of the resistance isn't some. Uh, you are sorry that the character of Danny Ramos. It, you're not going to give birth to some man, and then. Uh, uh, Sarah Connor goes on to say that you're John Connor to Danny Remus, all this stuff utterly terrible destroying uh, any affection or any goodwill the movie may have may have had at any point in the movie just terrible script choices uh, and really alienating a uh, diehard fan to the franchise very much uh, along the lines of what Last Jedi did to the Star Wars franchise. Cameron said that that there was blood still being scraped off the walls from those creative battles. Cameron then went on to say, I mean my work with Robert, I think Robert Rodriguez on Alita was very different. Robert loved the script, loved everything, said I just want to make this movie, I want to make the movie the way you see it. I was like, no, you just gotta make your movie. I had the reverse experience with Tim, James Cameron said, which is Tim wanted to make it his movie and I'm like, yeah, but I kinda know a little about this world. So I had the matter and the anti-matter version of the productural pro producial experience. This is a film forged in fire, so yeah, but that's the creative process, right? <laughs> so Tim Miller was, uh, or sorry, James Cameron was essentially saying after the release of the movie that Tim Miller was a pain in the arse and that uh, they had a lots of arguments and it's not really all my fault. That's kind of what he was trying to say. Tim Miller then would come out pretty much soon after that and say, yeah, this movie flopped because of the past sequels and then he will never work with Cameron again because Cameron wanted to do all this crazy shit about, uh, he said that Cameron wanted to have uh, Terminators that could make baby. He he forced him to do the big plane action sequence um, and all this stuff. Miller and Cameron using the media and online to give their sides of the story and essentially say to each other, yeah, it was your fault, it wasn't mine. That's what it looked like. They suggest they're still friends and that they hang out. Not so sure that's completely true. Could be wrong. So overall, the whole thing from start to finish was a little off. The The Hollywood Reporter interview was a pretty nice way to introduce things. Miller and Cameron uh, promised a lot uh, and didn't deliver on most of what they said they would do in terms of getting the franchise back to what the fans wanted. They seemingly just did what they thought with very little um, with very little um, appreciation of what the fans would want. So there's there's the Terminator retrospective. I not, may have missed some aspects. What do you think about the whole Terminator Dark Fit um, saga? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know.